So how do you use red light therapy in order to improve your sleep quality? You may have already seen some research on this and now you may be wondering how do you use your red light therapy device in order to improve your sleep quality? So in this video I'm going to be answering three questions and that's going to be when is the best time of day to do red light therapy to improve your sleep quality? How long your sessions should be and at what area you should be aiming your device? What's up guys, it's Nick Kutzer here and welcome to the Mitochondria YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, then you're gonna find content all around light, circadian rhythms, and how you can optimize these things in order to live your best life. If you haven't already done so, make sure that you hit both the subscribe and the notification bell so that you get notified as soon as we release future videos. Now for today's video, we're talking about a very important factor, your sleep quality. If you can have really small improvements in your sleep quality, just like a 5% increase, that's gonna have drastic impacts on so many different areas of your life. You know, your energy is gonna be better, your mood's gonna be better, your muscle recovery will be faster, you'll have decreased inflammation. There's a quote from a guy who's a very well-known sleep doctor, his name is Matthew Walker, and he says, sleep is like the Swiss army knife for health. It really is, you know, just this one, one-stop shop for all different aspects of your health and performance, so it really is something that you wanna be paying attention to. Now in a previous video we discussed a study on red light therapy and sleep quality and I'll link to it above here. And in that study they found drastic improvements. There was a near 30% increase in sleep quality. There was up to 75% more melatonin which is your sleep hormone. And there was also an 80% uh, faster time to fall asleep which is known as your sleep latency when people were using red light therapy for just 14 days. Now, what I want to discuss in this video is the exact intricacies of how you can replicate this protocol and get the same benefits in the comfort of your own home. So the first thing we're going to be covering is the surface area. Now, what's really important to understand is the way that red light therapy is shown to improve your sleep quality is mainly through this increased melatonin production. So what happens is when your cells receive red and near-infrared light, they produce more energy. Now, as a byproduct of this, your body also produces a very powerful antioxidant alongside this energy, and that antioxidant is melatonin. So, if you look at the study that we mentioned earlier, what they were using is complete full body devices, and they were targeting large areas of your body. So, you really want to be focusing on like your chest and your back and your legs, where there's these large surface areas where you're going to get this, you know, massive increase in energy production within those cells, and subsequently an increase in melatonin. Now, if you have a full body device, that is obviously the most ideal, where you can target large areas at once, but you can also do this with a portable device like a MyLight Move. You're just gonna need to maybe do a few sessions where you're aiming it at your chest at first and then your legs and covering three or four areas in order to get the same benefits. Now, the second thing is going to be what time of day. So this is quite an important one because red light therapy doesn't have much of a circadian aspect to it. Because it is one of the most dominant types of light that we would have been exposed to in nature, our body allows us to get exposed to red and infrared light almost at any time of day. However, and this comes from more from personal experience, when you look in the literature you'll see red and near-infrared light doesn't impact your circadian rhythm. However, I get this myself and I, not all of our customers get this, but some people do find that just because a red light therapy device is very bright, it can be quite stimulating. So I personally find that if I do my session too close to bedtime, if it's within half an hour, and I stand in front of my device and it's this really bright light, even though my eyes are closed, it does still have this stimulator effect on my mind and just gets my mind thinking of things. So I believe that for best, best benefits, you want to make sure it's at least half an hour before you're going to bed. But exactly like what we saw in the study, they were doing evening time sessions. So you want to be doing it somewhere between two and three hours before you're planning to go to bed. That'll give your body enough time to produce that extra melatonin and get it circulating through your system. But personally, I find that I don't want to do this within half an hour of going to bed. Maybe you're an exception to this. But for your own um, you know, testing, it would be worthwhile checking maybe if it's a little bit further away from bed. That timing might be better for you in order to improve your sleep quality. Now the last and probably most important point is how long should your red light therapy session be? Well, in the study that we referenced earlier, they used a dosage of 30 joules per centimeter squared. Now depending on the device that you're using, that's going to mean a different time frame, but with one of the Mitochondria devices, such as the MyLight MIDI, you could achieve this within five minutes. 
Now, it's really important that when you're choosing a red light therapy device, the company is transparent with you and gives you all the specifications on their device and also really useful if they give you a customized protocol. So if you look at the mitochondria devices, each of them comes with a dosage guide and you can see exactly how long you should be sitting in front of your device for a specific benefit such as sleep quality. If you guys have any questions from today's video, then please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can email us at info at mitochondria.com. You can also leave a comment in the comment section below and we'll be sure to answer it there. And then other than that, I hope that you have a fantastic day further and we will chat again soon. Cheers.